state of Yahweh. Yahweh knowing that man, Yahweh knowing that man could not perceive of him in his pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Yahweh Elohim. This is You're okay, Go ahead. But this form could only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelations. Later on, this self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and got in a physical body and walked okay, the earth plane and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now, there's only one name given unto Walk salvation, and we must Walk know that name. Yash Messiah, the world calls Jesus Christ. So the simple yet intelligent question that we should ask ourselves is what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name and title may be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also in this school we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It's called the divine pattern because it's Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court roundabout. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In the school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern the primary constitutional objectives and aims of the institute are as follows first is to help you find and know yahweh our elohim as he really is and actually exists second is to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in yahshua the messiah without distinction of race or nationality creed sex caste or color Third is to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Four is to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, modern, practical, and occult science. Five is to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Six, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seven, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eighth is to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith, which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth is to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained. There's no other name given among men whereby man can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And 10 is to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the newer state. Our watchword is peace and our slogan is speak the truth. At this time, we'll have a prayer by Dr. Frank DeMassey to dedicate our class. That will be followed by our scripture, which is Hebrews, the 10th chapter. That will be read by Dr. Scott Miller and Dr. Linda Volpe will be our second scripture reader. Good afternoon and good evening to everyone. Can we all take a moment? Let's bow our hearts and minds. Let's try and get all the thoughts of the flesh out of our heads and concentrate on our creator. Dear Father, Yahweh, may this prayer be acceptable unto you through our Savior, Yahshua, the Messiah. And we, we thank you for allowing us one more opportunity to stand before and to testify of this glorious gospel. Allow each and every one of us to realize that the grace has been bestowed upon us, that we have heard a voice from heaven, and it has converted our nature. And, our, and we now, all we can do is hold fast to all the things that we've learned, use that as our foundation and chance, all the misery and anxiety of the world, and give Yahshua all the credit. Let us show love and long, and long suffering to each other and always love the truth. We have, 
Say this in the name of Yahshua. I'm going to say hallelujah. 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 Good evening and afternoon, class. Tonight's scripture will be read out of the Holy Name Bible, containing the Holy Name version of the Old and New Testaments, critically compared with ancient authorities and various manuscripts, revised by A.B. Trina of the Scripture Research Association. Hebrews, the 10th chapter. For the law, having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things, can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the comers thereunto perfect. For then would they have not ceased to be offered, because that the worshippers once purged should have had no more conscience, consciousness of sins. But in those sacrifices there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou didst not desire. Mine ears hast thou pierced. For offering and sin offering hast thou not required. Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me, I delight to do thy will, O Yahweh. Above, when he said, Sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings, even for sin, thou wouldest not. Neither hadst pleasure therein which are offered by the law. Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O Yahweh. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. By the which we will, will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Yahshua the Messiah once for all. And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of Yahweh, from henceforth expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified, whereof the Holy Spirit also is a witness to us, for after that he had said before, This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith Yahweh. I will put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds I will write them. And their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Now where remission of these is, there is no more offering for sin. Having therefore, brethren, liberty to enter into the holiest places by the blood of Yahshua, by a new and living way, which he hath consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. And having a high priest over the house of Yahweh, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. For if we sin willfully after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fire indignation, which shall devour the adversaries. He that despises Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Of how much sore punishment suppose ye shall he thought worthy, who hath trodden under foot the Son of Yahweh, and hath counted the blood of the covenant, wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing, and hath done despite unto the Spirit of grace. For we know him that hath said, Vengeance is mine. I will recompense, saith Yahweh, and again Yahweh shall judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living Elohim. But call to remembrance the former days in which, after you were illuminated, ye endured a great fight of afflictions, <clears throat> partly while, whilst ye were made a gazing stock, both by reproaches and afflictions, and partly whilst ye became companions of them were so used, that were so used. For he had sympathy with them who were in bonds, and took joyfully the spoiling of your goods, knowing in yourselves that ye have in heaven a better and an enduring substance. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward. For ye have need of patience, that after ye have done the will of Yahweh, ye might receive the promise. 
for yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. That's Hebrews, the 10th chapter. Thank you, Dr. Damasi and Dr. Miller. And I'd um, like to call on our first speaker tonight, Dr. Sharon Welch from Syracuse. I'm sorry, I, I was trying to um, fix the problem that we're having on YouTube. I'm very sorry. My um, technical difficulties are distracting me besides other things. <laughs> um, I'm... <clears throat> I, I'm sorry, I have to, um, I cannot give my full attention. Um, I just know that I am still trying to hang in there and uh, give praise to Yahshua. Um, and I'm going to have to um, give up the floor and um, just praise Yahshua. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Welch. Our next speaker, I'd like to call Dr. Rochelle Morgan from our um, Illinois class. Good evening, class. Good evening. Great, you can hear me. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a wonderful thing to be with uh, like spirits. And I don't take that for granted because that's a joy. I'm out of breath because I just got home from work. But anyway, it's a joy to be with, um, as we say, brethren. And in the scriptures, you'll always read where Paul and all the apostles, they were always saying men and brethren. And now I uh, understand why, because all of Israel is not of Israel. But, and I didn't learn that until I came down to this school. And I love how, and this gospel, um, let's get that word. As somewhere in Matthew, it says, and this gospel shall be preached to, you know. Yeah, let's, I think let's Matthew get that. 24. Yeah, get that somewhere. When you get it, just let me know. Because this is a school, and this is not a church. And that's a joy for me, because I was raised in the church, and I didn't learn anything that I'm trying to share with you today did not come from the Catholic church that I grew up in. I didn't learn anything of this. I didn't learn that the creator had a name because they didn't see how a name was important. But yet and still, to the Catholic Church, names are very important because they're always trying to get whoever can don donate the most money. Their names get put on these plaques. They get put on this, this building, that building, this school, that school. They want to give all this glory and honor to a person that's helped out with the upkeep of these physical, natural things, such as a church or building. So they do think names are important, and they, they glorify whoever gives the biggest donation. I mean, that's just how these churches are, and that's the way it's always been. But I didn't learn this till coming down to this school. So do we have that? Can you tell yes. where you're reading? Yes, Matthew 24, 14. Okay, let's read that. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness it, un, it unto says, all nations, and then it, shall the end come. It says, and this gospel, see, because um, just like there's only one teacher, one instructor, is only one gospel. And, and that's what we came down here, that's what I came down here to learn. And since coming down to this school, 
um, you're introduced that um, man walking around like you and I, nothing special about this man. Uh, he was an attractive man. Or, you know, was nothing physical. Just like it says over in the uh, in the prophets, when you shall see him, there's nothing that you would be attracted to want to go and hear him. You know, but the what he talked about is what you we were learning about, we, and what he shared with us was that he had a vision, a divine vision, and re revelation given to him from our founder. Um, uh, in 1931, and this on this chart, we use charts. Why? Because when the apostles preached to the assemblies, different Corinthians and Gal Galatians and Ephesians, these are all places and people that they would go and preach this gospel to. They would pull out what they call parchment and they would roll them down. And then this is what they would teach them with. Because remember these, the men, the apostles were not learned men. They were not like um, you know, the Sadducees and the Pharisees, they were not those learned men. They learned this when Yahshua came on the scene. So it says in this gospel of the kingdom shall be, read that again, please. I'll listen this time. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. So that's what we're trying to give to you a witness to all nations. And if you knew the scriptures, when they talked about a witness to all nations, the nations they're talking about was all was the Jew and the Gentile at that time. You know, that's the nations he's talking about. Uh, it's just like the textbook is written for the human race and we are of the human race to give a witness as to what has happened. The textbook tells you about uh, what happened in the Bible and we've got four volumes in our textbook, you know, one volume, volume one through four. So that's what we try and teach to you. This gospel, and, and I have to keep saying this gospel because I didn't learn this any, you know, I'm talking about another gospel or not another gospel, but another doctrine. And the other doctrine that I came under was Catholicism. I think that's how you pronounce it, the Catholic Church, okay? And that Catholic Church had a doctrine. And their doctrine taught a Trinitarian concept, which I, even when I was in school, I, I just knew Father, Word, and Holy Spirit, you know? So I didn't realize that there was a doctrine and I didn't know what came with that doctrine. Not only the, the titles were wrong and the name was wrong, but the doctrine had nothing to do with, like in the scripture lesson, it talks about the saving of a soul. And it also says that in Psalms uh, 19 and 7, so you can grab that too. It talks about what the purpose, you know, one of the things we're talking about in this doctrine is saving your soul. Now, before coming to class, I didn't know my soul was in jeopardy because, uh, again, I knew the titles Lord and God and the name Jesus. And all the Catholic Church said was be good and be nice and you go to heaven. Very simple, very plain. In fact, there that's why so many people went to church because our mass was just an hour. You're like, oh yeah, I can do an hour every Sunday, but that's nothing, you know? And so uh, just the convenience of the timing made it so convenient to be a Catholic because you could go out and do wrong and go to church for an hour and say a couple of Hail Marys and you're good to go. I mean, that's how they set you up, but that was wrong. That was all wrong but I had to be taught in order to know that it was wrong first I had to be taught it was wrong then I was taught the truth and then once you're exposed to the truth if there is any understanding in you you know hopefully you'll you'll be leaning towards the truth as opposed to a lie from a natural standpoint that's why we Dr. Kenny would be we would say and we say this too we don't, you don't come down to the school to learn about values and how to treat one another and how to act. Hopefully, you are taught these things in your environment. You know, um, what's good, what's bad. You know, do certain things, you, you know, you know good from evil, hopefully. So Dr. Kinley School was not set up to teach you to be a good person. He was teaching us to become ministers to preach this gospel. 
you know, and in order to do that, he had to first introduce you to the name of who's who this gospel, what's this doctrine talking about? We're talking about our creator and our creator had a name. The church doesn't teach that a name is important. I didn't say the church didn't know the names. I said the church doesn't think names are important, but I started off telling you to them what's important with certain names is the money that comes at. When Rockefeller makes a donation, that's pretty important. So they're going to really give all praise, honor, and glory to the Rockefeller family. You know, and I'm, I don't know if they were Catholic or Protestant. Uh, what are you, uh, I don't know what religion they were. But anyway, uh, but that's how they value names. They put money with it. Well, we're here to tell you we're not teaching you uh, prosperity down at this school. If you came in here poor, to the one, you're going to stay poor because we're not trying to give you a reason to come back to think that, oh, uh, this church, just like some people will stop at our location in Chicago on the south side and, and they will come in and say, well, um, where, where do I sign up for free dinners? And I'm like, do you smell any food in here? There's nothing in here to eat. So we were not giving away food. And that's what people come to these churches. They're looking for food and things and coats and somebody helped them pay their rent and all this other stuff. That's not what this school does. And from a natural standpoint, most schools, um, they try and help the kids nowadays because they have free lunches and free breakfast, but that wasn't always, you know. So what we're getting that's free, that's a substance, but we're giving you substance for something that's not physical. And what I had to learn was the free substance that I received, I had to first learn how I was made in the likeness and the image of my father. And we always say that um, Yahweh is pure spirit. And in a pure spirit state, he gave himself the name, or not gave himself, his name has always been, we've just, I'm just being introduced to it. His name has always been Yahweh. And Yahweh is a masculine and feminine name that he gave himself. Um, what witness do I have of that? You take Adam, the first man, and all the predominant hormone in Adam is androgen. And you take the first woman, Eve, and the predominant hormone in her is estrogen. There's that masculine and feminine concept right there, right within himself. So then that Greek mythology, which talks about a sky god concept, that's that's the man-made concept. So what I had to come down here to learn is so many things that I thought I knew and that was taught to me. And most of parents had to pay for religion or pay for school if you went to a Catholic school. So you paid money to be taught lies, you know. And that's just amazing to, to me. I could have went to a public school and had the same thing, you know, but people don't want to believe that. Um, anyway, so you get the you get the name of the creator, Yahweh. And then you find out, well, what is Yahweh? And and you find out Yahweh is spirit. Can we get John 4, 24? Now, why am I pulling scriptures? Because one of the tools that I use that's been shown to me is the Bible. And the Bible is broken down and it's the, uh, the first part of the Bible that they call the Old Testament is really the it's 39 books composed together. The first five books of that portion is called the um, the law. And that was something that was given to Moses. Moses is accredited for writing those first five books. The remaining 34 books are the testimony, the I mean the prophets. And that's what the prophets were told to write. Uh, and in order to understand this, get over in the scripture where it says the scriptures were not written. They were written for um, by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. See, these are not my words. I want that read because it says that in the book. And the part where it says that it's going to be in the fulfillment, which the world calls the New Testament. But that leaflet should read fulfillment because that's Joshua fulfilling everything that was written in the law and the prophets. So in order for me to talk to you, uh, the easy way for me to do it is to use the tools that were given to us. The law, the first five books by, of the Bible, the prophets, the, the 34 books of, Bible, of the Bible, and then the remaining, um, what they call the test, New Testament is really the fulfillment. So it's law, prophets, and fulfillment. Why? Because Yahshua only came in to fulfill what was already written in the law and the prophets. See, with our doctrine here, we connect the dots. We explain to you why we're using the law and the prophets. So then when the Messiah is talking and his apostles are talking, 
at the time they were talking, they were they're not talking from Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John because they're still walking around in the physical body. They were talking about what was written under the law and the prophets. So now you understand how we're making a a net like a fish net with sewing a line, line upon line, precept upon precept, and we get those from the law and the prophets. Then the fulfillment. I asked for a couple of things. I want you to read them, and then I'll stop and see where we're at. <laughs> Um, which one do you want first? You want uh, whatsoever things were written aforetime? Um, what? Yeah, read whatever you just said. Let's try that. <laughs> uh, Romans 15 and 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. Yeah, but it, uh, there's some place in the Bible where he talks about it, tells you that the scriptures were written um, by the inspiration of yeah. the Holy Spirit. Oh, yeah. 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 It's, that's it's second, second Peter, second, second Peter, I believe, 1 and 20. Yeah, read okay. that, too. Let's that try was that. Good too. Yeah, because that was good, too. All right. Knowing this first, that no prophecy. No, now, in order to say something, Peter is telling you, you have this. This is what I want you to know. First of all, knowing this first, you got to know something. See, when we're talking, that's that faith to faith. I can only talk to you faith to faith if we know something. And in order to know something, then um, Scott, can you grab uh, John fourteen twenty six? Because John fourteen, John four and twenty four says Yahweh is spirit. And they that worship him must worship in him in spirit and truth. And before you read that second Peter, read John 14 and 26, because it says you have to knowing this first. Well, how do you know something? Please read, Scott. Uh, that's a comp um, John 14, yeah. 26. But the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. So that's how you get to know something is being taught to you. And it's not being taught to you, just like what we know wasn't taught to us by the man, Henry C. Kinley. That's just the body that he used. But what was taught to us came directly from the Holy Spirit, from the creator of himself, the uh, universal spirit law. Yahweh himself spoke to this man through our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah. And that's who teaching it and talking to us. Not Dr. Kinley. He's just a vessel, just like with all the other prophets you know he spoke through people this is and this is a hard pill to swallow because the world doesn't know that the creator didn't just start talking to people face to face he's always spoken to mankind and he's always and how do i why do how do i know that you go back to the law and you talk about like uh abraham and they knew him as el shaddai that's his title which means almighty provider and that's what they knew. He was a provider. Even back then under the law, they knew it was something greater than them that was doing stuff, you know. So this is nothing new. But the world now acts like, excuse me, we're just out here on our own. But we're not. He has never left us. He's always been with us. But read that first. What you going to read um, next, please. Okay. Second Peter 1 and 20. Knowing yes. this. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not at any time by the will of man, but by holy men of Yahweh as spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. See, it wasn't a will of man. It wasn't a will of Dr. Kinley to tell us this stuff. Because I was told when Dr. Kinley had the vision and the creator asked him, well, ma'am, what are you going to do with the stuff I'm showing you? And Dr. Kinley didn't reply right away. And when he did reply, he said, teach thy people thy will. And that's what we came down to. That's what I'll use me. I came down to the school not knowing because when I was invited to school, I had no idea why they invited me down here. I thought I was OK in my little Catholic world. I had no I wasn't one of those people looking for religion. I was content. I believed the report with what they were saying. I didn't know it was a lie. This is how this is, this is a great mystery. This is a great love story because Yahweh in 1987 said, hey, girl, stop. And it started with a meal. He's like, stop eating this natural food. I was in Burger King. And come and learn and eat some real food, some soul food, if I could say it that way. Because we always talk about this fast food restaurant, which is not good for you. So when I came down there, I had no idea 
that this was going to be a life changing experience, you know. And so here we are, we're in class and we are introduced to the name. And when I started off saying Yahweh and Yahweh is spirit and what is and, and then we learn what is spirit made of. Spirit is made of nine divine, This not made up of, but this is what spirit is. And on this chart, it says intelligence, wisdom, knowledge, beauty, love, justice, foundation, power, and strength. And if you notice, I've said them in the sequence of three, because that's, and I'm not using the number three. I'm just saying, I just happened to mention three th different things at three different times, because they're, when they take on shape and form, they have a set place to go to. But in that pure spirit state, it says he's in incomprehensible and inscrutable. And this is such a great love story. And I had to learn that Yahweh wanted his creatures to know about him. See, the world doesn't teach that God or Lord wants you to know him. They, they, the Catholic Church tells you, well, confess your sins to me. And, and, um, and I'll pull your parents out of purgatory and all this stuff. They really tell people they got power, but they are lying. They don't have those power. They don't, that doesn't exist. Those are blatant lies. And so then when you learn that your creator has a name and you learn that he's a spirit, not a spirit, he is, it says for Yahweh is spirit. And some Bibles it says Yahweh is a spirit. But when you come and learn there's only one spirit and you learn that Yahweh is spirit and he's those nine divine attributes and he's universal spirit law and he's got the power to transmute into an incorporeal a super incorporeal that's invisible invisible seen on in vision and revelation and he's got the power to manifest in a physical body that's why we say when he takes on shape and form he loses no power because now when moses looked at that shape and form he said we look just like him we made in likeness and the image of him in this picture and this pictorial illustration it's just a pictorial illustration it's like a guideline to help you visualize what moses saw and so then uh here you see Yahweh in that shape and form and he's got a head cavity chest cavity and lower abdominal cavity now in that shape and form you see those attributes being lined up beauty love justice wisdom intelligent wisdom knowledge beauty love justice foundation power and strength then he goes on and we call this shape and form the title elohim which is the word or son. And why is why are we telling you about the word or son? Because all through the Bible, under that law of prophets, you'll see the prophets always said, and the word came unto me saying this, and the word came unto me saying that. But what are they talking about? They're talking about that shape and form. So this is how these prophecies didn't come of their own will. It came from that state and form as Yahweh Elohim. And he would tell Isaiah, write this, Noah, uh, do that. Uh, Noah's going to rain. So, so he's always spoken to people. This is what we try and use these witnesses in the Bible to show you that Yahweh has always communicated with mankind. So as Yahweh Elohim, that shape and form, we and we call that the word or sign. Every word has a definition. Then he goes to the next, when he goes, when you look at this chart, you'll see the next thing you're going to see is a pictorial illustration of something called a pattern and patterns are not nothing new to this day i mean da vinci you watch some of these old movies and you'll see some of those old names like um you know picasso da vinci all these designers they use patterns and they would make millions of dollars making these gorgeous gowns and clothes for the president and for the pictures and all these other things well this pattern here is broken down into threefold it consists of a, mo a most holy place a holy place and a court roundabout why is knowing that the creator is a pattern and on the chart it says elohim the archetype which means original pattern of the universe the first thing after i learned the names i learned that my creator was a pattern i didn't know the father was a pattern because they don't teach this in church and uh, they uh, nobody I know that goes to church talks the way we talk. They when you could, when they go to church on Sunday, you ask them, Well, how was how was church? Oh, it was good. What you learned? Oh, he talks about um so and so down the street lost his dog and his cat. And they just talk about all this physical stuff. And if you give ten dollars a month to the church, you're gonna get a blessing. That's the kind of nonsense they come home and think that was a good lecture, as opposed to coming home. Like we do, I rush to get to class tonight because I want to hear what's going to be said about Yahshua. So here, that word or son, he's a threefold pattern. 
And uh, as I said, and why is that so important? Because everything, nothing, and this is said by the moderator, nothing escapes the pattern. And if you notice, I'm only repeating the things that said in the moderation because that's what we're going to teach. This is our doctrine. This is this gospel that we're going to tell you about. That's why we always try and get people to come in and hear the moderation. So then it breaks down the first day of creation, the second day of creation, all the way to the sixth day. And that's when man was created in the likeness and image. He was made last so that man could not say, look what God and I did. Yahweh did this. He has always been a self-existent deity. There is no other God, so God is with him. He's alone by himself. So then with that, and then showing that he uh, incorporeal, that's invisible. Then at an appointed time, salvation was given to mankind. That self-same spirit got in a physical body and walked the earth plane as our salvation. His name is Yahshua. And Yahshua means that Yahweh is our salvation. So see, to try and tell the world that that was never God's little boy that came down to save us, it was the creator himself. So then we go through the names and introduce that to you. And then we introduce this pattern to you because then it's going to make sense or idea for me. And when I found out what a, the pattern was threefold, then I placed that pattern on my physical body. And I had to learn that I'm made up. I have a physical body. Within that physical body, I have a soul. And that soul is governed by universal spirit law, which I learned had two mysteries in operation, the mystery of righteousness and the mystery of unrighteousness. Now, this where the plot thickens for me. I didn't know I was under the influence of which one, either one. I didn't know I was under the influence of spirit. I thought I was... Now I understand when I came in class and at the bottom of this mosaic chart, there's darkness. And that darkness represents ignorance you know, death like state. And so I came in with a physical body because I told you I made a body, soul, and spirit. And I didn't know my soul was dead. How did I know my soul was dead? Because I knew nothing whatsoever about a creator, about Yahweh, nor the big thing. I didn't know that my soul was lost. I didn't know my soul was dead because I didn't know what Yahweh, see, I have to, when you come down to this school, you have to understand Yahweh's understanding, Yahweh's definition, Yahweh's purpose, pattern, and plan. You have to learn these things. So when I learned that Yahweh had a purpose, Yahweh had a pattern and he had a plan, well, within his purpose, I didn't know my soul was dead. So when you find out your soul is dead, that means you just didn't know I was ignorant towards everything I'm talking to you about, something as simple as the name. I didn't know that. And so then, when you learn that and you learn that there are two mysteries in operation, it make and as you come here, this is why we tell you we can't say it all in one day. I'm just trying to give a brief foundation of our classes about this school, this doctrine that we teach to you. We teach that there's a pattern in operation. We teach you what the pattern is, just like that pattern that's shown at the top. And I said it was the most holy place, a holy place in a quote roundabout. That pattern has a structure. There are nine vessels in each compartment of that pattern, and each time they're doing something different, and it has a function. Now, the only example I can give to you is the one that was given to me, which makes sense, which is water being two hydrogens and an oxygen, and water can ex exist in a gaseous state, which is abstract. It can exist in a liquid state, taken on shape and form of what you pour it in. And it can exist in the solid state, taken on the shape of ice as it's toned down, you know, temperature wise, and you get that ice, that solidness. So then those are just some basic examples of this pattern and why we can boldly say nothing escapes the pattern. I mean, it's just wonderful how it just is broken down so wonderfully. So it's important for me now that word, when I hear we're going to teach you about this doctrine, this school, because we're set apart from all the other schools and all the other doctrines. And all we ask you to do is do a little detailed investigation to see if what we're saying is true. And we're saying very simple things. And I like the fact, Dr., one of our founders, I mean, not founder, but one of our elders in the class who's passed on, Dr. Freddie Allen, he would always say, I would always greet the class or greet someone with a kiss. Now, what's the definition of the word kiss for us? Keep it simple, stupid. And that's for me. I'm going to always keep it simple because we're trying to, Dr. Kinley said, if a child can come in and learn, because we do, 
learn this this doctrine because it's one, two, three, A, B, C. We're keeping it simple so that you can go home. I've given you the tools now to use to go and do a detailed investigation on something as simple as the name. A detailed investigation. Is the Bible really written like that? Law, prophets, and fulfillment? You know, some type of Dr. Morgan. Thank you, sir. Wow, okay. that was fast. So anyway, I, I hope something was said that as we like, as Frank loves to say, we want to stir up your something in you to say, let me come back and hear some more about this school and learn a little bit more about this doctrine and, and learn, was my soul really lost? Is my soul really important to me? Well, when you find out you're made up body, soul, and spirit, you know that you are not going to live forever. So this body is going to take off the flesh. And it says in the book, from dust you came, the dust you go. You're made from the dust of the earth. You're going to go right back to the dust of the earth. But that, that spirit that quicken you, that wakes you up in the morning, that part of you has to go on. It, does, it just, doesn't, just doesn't dissolve into the air and become one. It structure and function. And that's what we're trying to teach you, the, that you came out in spirit and you're going back in spirit. Now you can go back in unrighteousness or you can go back in righteousness. Either way, you're not going to stay, not going to stay in this physical body forever. Nobody wants to live forever. Some people do, but as you get older and things break down, at one point you're like, oh, no, I've had enough. You can take me out, Father. I'm tired. You don't even have to wait to get to be 80 and 90. It happens quickly <laughs> where you're just exhausted from the weight of carrying these physical bodies around. And as you get older, things are just cutting off and turning on and everything happens. But we try and teach you to get, this is a metaphysical school. We try and teach you to get out of the physical and get to the spiritual part beyond the physical body. These are the these are the things we're learning, and and it's so I'm so happy to be able to talk about things that are beyond the physical body because in, if it says in the book, if you only have in this life only, you're men most most miserable, and I I'm not miserable because I don't think about just this life only. I'm thinking about my soul, and every day it says when you wake up every moment, examine yourself. And see how much you're holding on to. See how much you learn and what's important to you. And that's going to make up the things that you value more in this world. And they won't be physical things. Yes, you still have to eat. You still have to drink. But you know that there's a greater. I love how Dr. Gill used to say there's something so much greater than this. And, just, and we're only touching the surface because we're talking spiritual now. And there's so much more to go through and so much more to learn. I hope something that was said will make you want to come back and hear some more about this doctrine, this gospel. And I give all praise, honor, and glory to my Heavenly Father, Yahshua. And I will give it back over to the moderator. Thank you, Dr. Morgan. Our next speaker will be Dr. Mae Cohen from Northside Chicago class. Good evening, class. Can you hear me? We can. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I am so glad that I am able to visit with my brother in Syracuse today. We had at my job employee appreciation day, so I got off early. And I said, well, I'm going to visit because I rarely get a chance to visit because we got the hour difference. And I'm still at work when you guys uh, start class. So I'm really glad to be here and I'm just so thankful uh, anytime I'm given an opportunity to have anything to say regarding this great gospel because this gospel, uh, it's, 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 it's not, it has nothing to do with man's intellect. You know, it has nothing to do with man at all. This gospel is a heavenly language. It's already been said in the moderation that this school was founded upon the divine vision and revelation that our founder had. And he said, make me prove it until you're satisfied. See, because Yahweh, he proves his own existence. And the uh, previous speaker brought out so many good points. And I'm hoping that uh, if I'm um, given the opportunity, I can continue on where she left off. But I like to, there's so many definitions in the Bible. And I like to get um, 1 Corinthians, uh, the 15th chapter, because we need to know what the gospel is. And also, I like to get uh, Isaiah 8 and 20, 
and uh, the uh, uh, pattern uh, uh, scriptures, starting with Exodus 25, 8, 9, Chronicles, and Hebrews. But if you can start with, um, I have a singing moment, which is the first one I asked for. <laughs> Oh, uh, uh, first, first Corinthians 15 and 1. Yes. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel. Okay. Which and, I, see, thing, and I'm sorry if I cut you off, but that's the same thing we're doing. We're declaring the gospel of the kingdom. And we're only able to do that if the Holy Spirit has taken up residence in the heart and mind. Because if the Holy Spirit has not taken up residence in the heart and mind, you'll think the gospel is going to church on Sunday, paying your tithes, getting baptized, just like the previous speaker was talking about, giving money so you can get your name on a pew, or you can be in the front row of church every Sunday, being closer to God so you think your minister is your mediator. You know, that's what we would think the gospel is. You see what I'm saying? But we're getting ready to read in the scripture the definition of the gospel. So continue to read. Okay. So moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which mm -hmm. also you have received, and wherein ye stand. Now see, you, you if this preach unto you, then you receive it, and you can stand in it. And here's here's the uh, ding 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 part of this. Okay, go ahead. Which what? By which also you are saved. Now it says that you're saved in this gospel. How? If you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless okay. you have believed in vain. Now it says, if you keep in memory, we know I think it's in John 14, 26, where it says Yahshua is the one that has to bring all things back to your remembrance. How is he able to do that? If he hasn't put his spirit in you, how is he able to bring anything back to your remembrance? Okay, continue to read. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, mm -hmm. how that Yahshua died for our sins, according to the scriptures. Now, he did it according to the scriptures. I want you to hold it right there. And somebody read Isaiah 8 and 20. He said he died for our sins according to the scriptures. Isaiah, Isaiah 8. 8 and 20. Mm -hmm. To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word... It is because there is no light in them. Now it says to the law, we come up here and we find out that the law is the first five books of the Bible. And it says to the law and the testimony, testimony is the next 34 books of the Bible, all together what they commonly call the New Testament, the first 39 books of the Bible. So it says to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to these words, does it say these words? Or what does it say there after that? It says this word. See, it says this word singular. So we find out, we come up in here, we find out that the word or son is Yahweh Elohim. We read all through, particularly in the prophecies. It says the word of Yahweh came unto me saying, and the word said, the word came and showed me. You see what I'm saying? We didn't know. You know, just like the previous speaker said, our souls were dead. We had no clue about our creator. The first aim of our school says to help you find, find and know. Okay, and get a John 17 and three, because there's a definition about knowing what eternal life is to know. It says to find and know Yahweh our Elohim as he really is and as he actually exists. You know, each and every one of us had our own idea or concept about our creator, you know, what we thought him to be, or we dressed him up to be what we wanted him to be. See, but we come down here finding out in this school, you know, that our founder was given a divine panoramic, means panoramic means unlimited view. He was given divine panoramic vision, and then he was given an understanding of what he was shown, and it was divine. People have visions and revelations all the time. You know, I remember one day I was going to work and the guard was sitting there. She had just got back from a vacation, right? And she's sitting there, her body there, but she's thinking about her vacation. You can see in her face that she wasn't present. And I said, come on back. 
because I could, I said, because I could see she wasn't there. I said, come on back, come on back. So she was having a vision. She was thinking about her vacation. And we have revelations too. You know, you might talk to somebody and you have a conversation and you don't quite get what they're saying. And then later on, you think about the conversation and you review it in your head. You say, oh, wow, now I get it. Now I get who he's talking about. See, so you say, you say, well, I don't believe that, you know, the founder of y'all school had a, a divine vision of revelation. We have them all the time. Well, what makes the difference between our little visions of revelation and the divine vision of revelation Dr. Kinley had, it came straight from Yahweh himself. And we know this because he has proven his own existence through the Holy Spirit that he has poured out in the heart and minds of of, in, of individuals, of mankind. We are not letting you know anything about what we figured out. We're not letting you know anything about what we have we got together in a, you know, in a group and say, yeah, well, you know, it's probably like this. Hey, yeah, we'll say it's like that. No, that ain't what this is. This is a heavenly lang language. This is the true speaking in tongues because this is coming straight from Yahweh himself through his son, Yahshua the Messiah. Okay, so go ahead, because I know I, I called a couple of other scriptures, but go ahead and finish in, um, in 1 Corinthians 15, because we was talking about the gospel. So it says to the law and the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, is because there is no light. We come up in here to find out the light is synonymous with understanding. Then we go over there and just like the previous speaker said, we can't get all this out in two hours. That's why we encourage you to continue to come. Continue to come and study with us and learn about your creator as he really is and actually exists. Okay, we find out in John 1 1 says in the beginning was the word and the word was with Yahweh and the word was Yahweh. And then you look on the uh, this uh, chart, it says Elohim, the archetype or original pattern of the universe. And we come to find out that Yahweh Elohim, he is the word. You see what I'm saying? It's a, This whole thing, it, it's just tough the way he set it up. But go ahead and, uh, and continue to read there uh, in Corinthians. Okay, 1 Corinthians 15, I'll pick it back up in 3. Okay. For I, for I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received. And that's all we're doing. We're delivering what we have received. Did you receive it from your dean? No. Did you receive it from one of those great speakers you think is such a great speaker? No. You received it from Yahweh Elohim, Yahshua the Messiah. That is the teacher and that is the speaker. Now we see the vessels up there on the floor. You see what I'm saying? But those vessels are not speaking of themselves if they, if they are a true minister of the gospel of Yahshua Messiah. They're not speaking of themselves. And we know that some people, you know, cause we, 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 it's just like being in school. We have different levels of understanding. You see what I'm saying? And some of us went through a phase where we looked up to this one or we looked up to that one. But then as we continue this school, we find it has nothing to do with that. And I'm gonna tell you something, a true recipient of the Holy Spirit, you know, because you can't help it if people say, oh, I think so-and-so is such a great speaker. You know, you can't help that. But if it come to you, if it come to you and somebody trying to puff you up, Guess what you're going to do? If you a true recipient of this gospel, you're going to turn them right around to look at what they need to be looking at. And they need to be looking at the gospel of Yahshua Messiah, the death, burial, resurrection, blood, water, spirit, according to the scriptures. Just like when you look at that tabernacle in the most holy place, them archangels, they facing each other. And it looks like they're looking at each other, but they're not looking at each other. They're looking at what's going on in the cloud. You see what I'm saying? So if you and I, we come together, you know, as speakers on the floor, we're not looking at each other. We listen to what thus saith Yahweh coming through the vessel. Just like the previous speaker said, she wanted to hurry up and get, get here so she can hear the gospel of the kingdom. And the same thing with me. I said, oh boy, you know, I'm, I got a free Wednesday. You know, I got off early. I want to be able to, you know, sup with my brother and hear what thus saith Yahweh, because he is the teacher and he is the preacher. It has nothing to do with the vessels. And if you are a true recipient of the Holy Spirit, you will profess that over and over and over again, as many times as you need to, because... You know, the creature was made subject to vanity. We have the case of I can't help it. You see what I'm saying? And if we're not careful, just like the previous speaker was talking about, you have to examine yourself. And it's not like you get to a point and you say, well, you know, I examine myself. 
I get this thing. Oh, yeah, I can see how this thing go. I'm good now. Nah, I'm good. No, nah, you ain't good. You ain't never good. Yahshua say they ain't none righteous. No, not one. All have fallen short of the glory of Yahweh. So you got to examine yourself. Why do you have to examine yourself? First of all, you got to see, you got to know this thing. You got to know the Yahshua Messiah is in you. And you also got to examine yourself because that old boy, you know, he, he, he's a, uh, he, he goes to extremes. Either he try to puff you up and make you feel like you the stuff, or either he try to make you feel like you ain't nothing. You see what I'm saying? Then, you know, he sneaks in little ways. He tries to come in and try to make you look at this one and look at that one or look at uh, this one or, you know, even your own shortcomings. You see what I'm saying? You know, but Yahshua Messiah, that's why he died on that cross. Remember back there with the children of Israel, they were given 613 some odd laws and ordinances. They were not able to keep them because there wasn't nothing in them to be able to keep it. That's why Yahshua Messiah at the appointed time came in, died the death of an outcast dog. He fulfilled everything. It says a jot and tittle. Jot and tittle means all the way down to the commas, the periods, the question marks. He came and fulfilled everything everything that was written in the law and the prophets so that mankind can have life and have it more abundantly. And the age that we in now, he poured out his spirit on all flesh and it's still going on to this day. You see what I'm saying? It, start, it started in Pentecost with that 120 and it's still going on to this day. See, he takes up residence in your heart and in your mind. But continue to read these. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, mm -hmm. how that Yahshua died for our sins, according to the scriptures. See, he didn't do it just any old kind of way. You know, when I went, I, I was raised in the Baptist church, and they used to say that all the time, almost every Sunday. Well, you know, Jesus died for your sins. And I didn't even know what sins was, you know, as sins. You know, he, it's, he died for the sin of mankind. You know, we used to think that sins was, well, you know, you smoking or you drinking or you wearing makeup or you wearing your dress too short. You see what I'm saying? That that ain't got nothing. That's sanctifying of the flesh. And that's what they think when they say they save is sanctification unto the flesh. You see what I'm saying? But that's not what it's talking about here. It says that he died according to the scriptures. And we just read what the scriptures were, the law and the testimony, the first 39 books of the Bible. So he died. He did it according to the scriptures. Read. And then he was buried, and then mm -hmm. he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. So now you got a you got a, a a point of identification here. You got he died for our sins according to this, uh, scripture. He was buried. He rose again the third day, but he did it all according to the scriptures. So when you read that, now we didn't know that we were able to take that. Uh, uh, he died for our sins, was buried, and resurrected the third day. We had no clue that that went according to a blood principle. Death went according to a blood principle. Burial went according to a, 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 a water principle and uh, rose again the third day went according to the resurrection for blood, water, spirit. It goes to through a blood, water, spirit. So that's his ID. That's how we're able to identify him. So it says that he did it according to the scriptures. So when we go back and we read those scriptures, the first 39 books of the Bible, we read all those different uh, Bible stories. We're going to see in every single one of those Bible stories, we're going to see a principle of a death or blood principle. We're going to see a principle of a burial or water principle, or we're going to see a principle of a resurrection or spirit principle. See, that's his ID. And it says that he don't change. So you are able to glean spiritual principles because remember, we're in the third, we're in the third age in time now. The first two ages, you know, mankind had no clue. It says death reigned from Adam all the way up to Moses. You see what I'm saying? And when Yahshua Messiah came in on the airplane, they were still under the law of Moses. You see what I'm saying? But through his death, burial, and resurrection, and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit that ushered in this age that we're in now. See, now we're in a spiritual age. Now we can go back and learn of these things and glean spiritual principles from them. Okay, uh, go ahead and read the uh, tabernacle uh, scriptures. Uh, start with Exodus. Okay, that'll be Exodus 24 and i'm sorry 25 and 8 mm -hmm. and let them make me a sanctuary 
that mm -hmm. I may dwell among them. Mm -hmm. According to all that I show thee, after the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all the furnishings thereof, even so shall ye make it. So, so why, why was that so utterly important that he had to make it according to how it was shown to him? Could go on and drop down to 40 first before I continue. And see that thou make them after their pattern, which was shown thee in the mount. Now he said, now that was an admonishment. He said, now make sure now, make sure now you make it according to the patterns you showed in the mountain. And he had to make sure that was accomplished because those that built that tabernacle pattern, he had to put his spirit in them. Because remember some of them cats, I, I think it was Nathan and Cora. I can't remember their names, y'all. But y'all know who I'm talking about. Some of them cats came to Moses and said, well, look, man, you know, we builders, we builders. So, you know, we think it should be done like this. You see what I'm saying? You know, when you look at the tabernacle, it's nothing, you know, fancy to look at. You see what I'm saying? A badger skin, dyed red. You know, it's nothing fancy to look at. But what's in there? What's in there? Those vessels. You have three vessels, three principal vessels in each compartment. Three compartments. Now, the vessels on the outside, they were highly polished brass. They looked like gold, but they wasn't the real thing, baby. They wasn't gold. They was highly polished brass. But when you went through that veil, see, when you went through that first, that they call the door, the fourth step, when you go through there, them vessels in there was gold, okay? And they had those beautiful curtains of blue, purple, and scarlet. It was beautiful in there. But outside, it was nothing special. Then you go into prophecy, and it talks about Yahshua Messiah, and it says, well, you know, he is no form of comeliness about him, ain't no beauty about him, but what was inside of him? You see, I'm, you see what I'm saying? He was the creator of heaven and earth in a sonship degree, coming down at the appointed time to be salvation or deliverance for mankind. You see what I'm saying? So now look at us. Here we are, you know, at the end of this thing. Okay, we what? How many, uh, since 1960, we've been in the probationary period since 1960 because we court, according to uh, Dr. Kenley's uh, vision of revelation, the earth or the world ended in 1960. So we in a probationary period. So look at us. You know, ain't none of us, you know, uh, nothing to speak of. We're just average looking folk. But what's in there? You see what I'm saying? What's in you? See, what's in you? Created the heaven and the earth. See, he declared the end from the beginning. That's what's in you. Yahshua Messiah, the Holy Spirit, taking up resonance in your heart and in your mind. I so enjoyed that prayer. I so enjoyed that prayer because it is what is in you. That's the beauty of this whole thing. He's in you. And you got to know that that he is in you and we have to know that and have the Holy Spirit in us before we take off this flesh. Now in the anti-Lubin age and the post-Lubin age, they could take off the flesh. They still had a chance, but we've got to know now, you see what I'm saying? While we walking around the physical body, because once we take this physical body off and we have not been you know, uh, given the gift or received the gift of the Holy Spirit, it's eternally too late then. Um, was that all? to that scripture yes okay all right uh i know I, I caught a couple of things uh you read the uh exodus 25 8 9 40 right yes okay so uh, go on reading chronicles and then on hebrews um what did you want exactly in chronicles oh uh, uh, the, uh tabernacle uh, uh the uh is the first chronicles uh where it says he made me understand. 2819. 2819. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, First Chronicles 2819. Mm -hmm. All this, said David, Yahweh made me understand in writing by his okay, hand. Okay, there's a clue. There's a clue. Ho. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry for cutting you off. There's a clue. He said, All this, Yahweh made me understand. See, it ain't like. Well, you know, I was always smart, you see, you know, some of us got degrees. I got one too. Okay. I got a degree. And, you know, some of us, you know, yeah, we smart. You see what I'm saying? But it ain't got nothing to do with you being smart. You see what I'm saying? See, he has to put his spirit in you. That's the only way you're going to get this thing. If he don't put his spirit in you, you ain't going to get this thing. 
You'll never get it. I don't care if you read the Bible every day. I don't even care if you see the correlations. You can see how this thing runs. He got to put his spirit in you, give you the spiritual reality of what this thing is all about. If he don't do that, mm -mm, you ain't going to get it. Continue to read. Okay, all this said, David, Yahweh made me understand writing by his mm -hmm. hand upon me. And here Even goes, all... he laid not his hand here. Here again, we find out in this school, the hand is synonymous with understand. And in the Baptist church where I came up, well, you know, let's pray on, let's pray on uh, brother so-and-so, and we're going to lay our hands on him and heal him and all that. It ain't talking about no physical laying on hands, man. It just ain't talking about that. It's your understanding. He opening your understanding. Remember when them boys was on the road to Emmaus, he opened their understanding and so they can understand the scriptures, but the Holy Spirit still hadn't been poured out yet. But see, he's the one that's got to give you the understanding. And then he's got to give you the gift of the Holy Spirit. You see what I'm saying? But go ahead and continue reading. Even all the works of this pattern. See, so he was given the understanding of all the works of the pattern, just like previous speaker said, we can't get it all out in two hours, see, because he had blood on his hands, so his son had to build the temple, Solomon's temple, and that's a whole nother story. We can't get it all out. We can't get it all out. Okay, go ahead and read Hebrews. I think it's eight and five. Yes, Hebrews eight and five, mm -hmm. who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things. See, so this tabernacle pattern that was put in the midst of them with the 12 tribes surrounding and it in the mist, see, and is pointing up to the true pattern of the universe, which is Yahweh Elohim himself. All these things serve unto it examples and shadows of heavenly things. Continue to read. As Moses was admonished of Yahweh mm -hmm. when he was about to make the tabernacle. That's why he was admonished by Yahweh, because this tabernacle pattern serves unto the example and shadow of heavenly things. And you cannot err. If you err, you, you mess the whole thing up. You see what I'm saying? It's pointing up to spiritual principles. Read. For see, saith he, that mm -hmm. thou make all things according to the pattern shown to thee in the mount. Well, it says, see that thou make all things according to the pattern that was showed in the mount. I'd like for you to get 1 Corinthians 5 and 7. I know I have some other ones here. Get 1 Corinthians 5 and 7. And after you get that, get uh, John 17 and start at 1. See, these things are our schoolmasters. There's another scripture. I don't know where it is. But it says this is our schoolmaster. Is our schoolmaster lead us up? All these things is leading us up to Yahshua the Messiah. This is his identification. You know how you have your ID, you have your driver's license, or whatever, and your ID got all your information. Say, oh yeah, okay, I can identify you by this ID. Well, this is the same thing here. You know, going back and seeing those principles of blood, water, spirit, death, burial, resurrection, that's Yahshua's ID. We can identify him. So then we know indeed what we, uh, uh, you know, as far as this school, in regards to the founder, having a divine vision of revelation and sharing it unto us, we find out that this thing is indeed true, just the way it was given to him, Okay. I'm telling you, this is really a beautiful thing, y'all. Y'all know it. I'm preaching to the choir. Y'all know it. This is such a beautiful, beautiful thing, you know, and Yahshua the Messiah. See, here's the thing that we need to understand. You you, you can't, it's like, you know how some people, you know, uh, I want to put my two cent in, you know, uh, well, I'm going to put my one cent in. You can't put your two cent in. You can't put your one cent in. It says in Isaiah 46, 9 and, and uh, 10, let's get that. I know I told you to get uh, first John 5 and 7, but get 46, get Isaiah 46, 9 and 10 first. Let's read that. See, we need we need to understand what this thing is really all about, okay? And you can't understand if he doesn't put the spirit in you, but we got to preach it. We got to preach it in hopes that, you know, just like somebody was patient with us, we got to be patient too. You see what I'm saying? You know, to bring bring up bring us up. You know, but he's bringing all of us up together. It's like being in a little red schoolhouse. That's how I, I look at it. You in a little red schoolhouse, and back in the day, they had grades. I think kindergarten all the way up to high school, but it was only one instructor, and one instructor taught all those kids. And the ones that was in kindergarten, they was just doing addition and 
subtraction. But then the ones a little older, they was doing like multiplication division. So they would help the ones that's doing the addition and subtraction. And then the ones, you know, a little ahead of them was doing algebra and, and geometry. And they would help the ones that are doing multiplication and division. But it was only one instructor. Only one instructor, guys. You know, what's that scripture say? Apollos watereth uh, something, you know, but it's Yahshua to get increased. That's basically what I'm trying to say. But go ahead and read Isaiah 46, 9 and 10. Isaiah 46 and 9. Remember mm -hmm. the former things of old. Mm -hmm. For I am Yahweh and there is none else. I am Yahweh and there is none like me. Declaring the end from the beginning. And from ancient times, the things that are not yet done, say. Okay, he said, he said, and I'm sorry to cut you off. He said, I'm Yahweh, none else but me. He says, none like me. He's, and then he tell you why. He said, because I declare the end all the way from the beginning. Okay? And from ancient times, all the way from before there was an angelic creation, all before there was a physical creation, from ancient times, not AD uh, 44 and all that, ancient times, all the way in the realm of eternity, because it tells you in the textbook, when he took on shape and form, he conceived the idea of creation. You see what I'm saying? So once Yahweh Elohim came into shape and form, it was set. That's why he said he declared the end from the beginning and from ancient times, the things that haven't even happened yet so let me see you do that let me see you do it okay you say hey you know i i'm master of my own fate i'm choosing my own existence so let me see you do that let me see you declare at the end from the beginning let me see you declare things that ain't happened yet the things are yet to come let me see you do that you plan your day you plan your day and I ain't mad, so don't get me wrong. I'm not mad. I'm just, uh, you know, expressing myself. You know, you plan your day, okay? Out to a uh, jot and tittle. You say, okay, I'm going to do this. And then at so-and-so time, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. But every day there's some kind of shift or some kind of change in your plan for the day. Not so with Yahweh Elohim. Not so with Yahweh Elohim. He said he don't change. And you can take that to the bank. That's why we're able to see and identify him through the law and the testimony because he don't change. You're going to see that principle of blood, water, spirit. You're going to see that principle of death, burial, resurrection. Okay, continue to read there. Hey, my counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. He said his counsel shall stand. See, he took on shape and form to be the creator of both the angelic and physical creation. At the appointed time, he came down. This is Yahweh himself taking on shape and form in part as Yahweh Elohim. And then at the appointed time, taking on the likeness of sinful flesh as Yahshua Messiah to be the deliverer for mankind. Also, give me Isaiah, 40, uh, Isaiah 45 and 20 after that and then we'll go over to first john five and seven but continue to read there uh calling a ravenous bird from the east the man that executeth my counsel from a far country okay now he said he calling a ravenous bird from the east that's a flesh-eating bird that eagle and it's so many uh, deep principles with these animals that he uses as principles to point up to spiritual principles the eagle in order to get to a storm what did he do he keep his eye on the sun he can look at the sun we can't look at the sun our retina and all that to get burnt up if we look at the sun too long but the eagle to, in order to get through a storm he keeps his I own the sun. See, so that is something to tell us when we going through our trials, we going through our tribulations, no matter no matter what's happening in our life. Let's keep our eyes on Yahshua Messiah. It tells you in Isaiah, I know it's in Isaiah, it says he will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. Now he said he calling a ravenous bird from the east. And don't the sun rise from the east? The S-U-N is pointing up to the S-O-N. Come on, look at these spiritual principles, y'all. You see what I'm saying? We glean in the spiritual principles now. We're in a spiritual age. It ain't physical no, no more. We ain't got to physically get water baptized. We ain't got to physically pay tithes. We ain't got to, you know, there is a baptism, but the baptism is with the living water. Do the preaching of the gospel. Yeah, there's Five a Five minutes, Dr. Cohen. Oh, okay, thank you. Okay. There is a circumcision, but the <laughs> circumcision cutting away that flesh. So so you can see who's sitting on your throne. You see what I'm saying? You know, see, we taking we look at the spiritual principles now. We glean spiritual principles from these natural things. And Romans 119 and 20 tells us 
We take natural things to understand spiritual things. But go ahead and continue to read there. Yeah, I have spoken it. I will yes. also bring it to pass. I need the word. He said, I've spoken it. And I'm going to bring it to pass. See the word. Go ahead. I have purposed it. I will also do it. He doing it. So what are you trying to do? He said, I purposed it. I'm going to also bring it to pass. I purposed it and I'm going to do it. So what you trying to do? Okay, go ahead. Because uh, he said, I got five minutes. So uh, get uh, Isaiah 45 and 20. Isaiah and then 45 and 20. Uh, 45 and 7. Mm -hmm. Assemble yourselves and come. Draw near together, ye that are escaped to the nation. Mm -hmm. They have, they have no knowledge. That's the only way you get an escape. Okay, that, do Yasha Messiah. That's the only way out of here alive. Everybody getting out of here. But we going to get out of here alive through Yasha Messiah. Continue. They have no knowledge that set up the wood of their graven image. See, they said no pray. In images they go to Walmart and all that and battle statue and putting in their car and said this is you know this is the virgin mother Mary this is God you know they go buy it at the store okay go ahead and pray unto a God that cannot save mm -hmm. tell ye and bring them near yea yeah. let them take counsel together yeah who has declared this from ancient times all the way from eternity from ancient times read who has told it from that time mm -hmm. if not I Yahweh Mm -hmm. And there is no L else beside me, a just L and a savior. There is none beside me. Well, look at that, baby. That's the unity of the spirit right there. He said, have I not Yahweh? And there is no L besides me, a just L and savior. There is none beside me. He a bad mama jammy, ain't he? All right. <laughs> Go ahead and get uh, First John 5 and 7. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. Okay. He said there are three that bear a record in heaven. There's a record in heaven. I never knew that before coming up in here. He said the Father, Yahweh, the Word, Yahweh, Elohim, and the Son, Yahshua, Messiah. And these three are one. And you see it all through everything in the universe because there's nothing that escapes the pattern. I'm in, I'm in my front room. I, I'm looking at a ceiling, a wall, and a floor. I'm looking at my finger. It's got three uh, parts, but it's only one finger. It's not a trinity, by the way. It's only one finger. Okay, so go ahead. Continue to read. And there are three that bear witness in earth. The mm -hmm. spirit, and the water, and the blood. And these three agree in one. Okay, so it says that the record in heaven has a witness on the earth. The spirit, the water, and blood. See that blood, water, spirit principle? That is our witness on the earth to testify the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. That is one. See, those three agree in one. Oh, man, this thing's so tight. Oh, wait. Talking about shouting, baby. That's the true shouting. When you really see, when he really shows you this thing and you can see it and you realize the ever presence of Yahweh as you go through your day, you know, through every day, you realize that he's present. There's never no time that he is absent. Okay. Oh, I'm telling you. All right. Continue. For we receive the witness of men. No, mm -hmm. if we receive the witness of men, the witness of Yahweh is greater. Now, he said this... we receive the witness of men. We do that all the time. You know, I, I, when I'm, I'm working from home now, but when I work, at, you know, in the building, I was on the 44th floor. I go up to the 44th floor. I expect that elevator to take me there. I get on the plane. I expect me to get it to my destination. But the witness of Yahweh is greater. Why? Why is the witness of Yahweh is greater? Because the witness of Yahweh is bringing you unto eternal life eternal life man okay i'm excited i'm sorry but this gospel it will get you excited because man this is it x marks the spot baby this is it okay but anyway i'm sorry i am excited but i'm i know that uh the time is up so i hope someone got something out of what i had to say and all praise honor and glory go to our wonderful savior yasha messiah thank you dr cohen our next speaker will be Dr. Diane Emler from our Oceanside, California class. She's coming. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. I got it. I had uh, a broken up class for me. Uh, I had a doctor's appointment 
during class. And then I'm just thinking I'm all over. And then I get a call back from those people. So I, I think I uh, caught most of class. Uh, the hard thing to do, um, man, it's just the older you get, once they get a hold of you, the doctors, they like never quit. And it's one thing after another, and you just have to work to keep your mind out of the flesh. And I appreciated what Sharon had to say, uh, that so much is happening that... Uh, to keep your attention, uh, full attention on Yahweh and what in fact is this spiritual creation. Uh, I hate to use the word work, but it is a work to remind yourself to concentrate. Uh, when I first walked into this class and concentrating on class for two hours, just it flew by. I didn't have to think about it. And now as I become older and uh, we're at home, for class and the distractions. I wouldn't have had to worry about going to a doctor's appointment if, if uh, we weren't on Zoom. Uh, but then Zoom uh, has been a blessing in so many different ways. Dr. Kinley uh, went on three or had, there were three ecclesiastical peace mm -hmm. missions. He did not go on the third. And uh, that covered many, many parts of the world. And at that time, we thought that it kind of covered uh, preaching this gospel to the whole world. But we preached at that time to the heads of the religions and to the heads of these countries. And they never uh, told the people. They never shared uh, what was told to them. Uh, they disregarded it. And now at this point with Zoom and uh, YouTube, uh, anybody uh, can listen to these classes and to this gospel. Uh, we're preaching it to the people as we always had in our little rooms or big rooms or however we uh, could do it, uh, we did it. We nailed up posters to advertise class, had quote-unquote special classes in different cities to mm. uh, try to uh, uh, get some interest in that someone would come in and understand. And what I was told from the beginning was that if you go out to a different city and preach this gospel, if just one person hears it, just one, 
the job has been done. And the job was done by so many people. And now at the end of this age, we are trying to get in touch with everyone in whatever part of the world that they live. And people need it now. They see this creation. Uh, they see the uh, Morocco and the earthquake. I, the, I think it was 6,000 people they think are dead. Uh, or in Libya, the floods in Libya and in Greece and how they these waves, this flood dam broke and washed the whole town out to sea, just <laughs> whoosh. And these sorts of things are happening daily. Mm -hmm. The violence in this world is profound. And back in the 70s, Dr. Kinley said that uh, the violence was worse than it ever has been. And as every year passes, you have more people on the earth plane. And with more people, you will have more violence. Because go get uh, uh, Revelation 12, uh, 7, I think. Revelation 12, 7. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought and his angels. Now we're talking about heaven. And when I was in uh, young going to church, I don't know what I really thought heaven was. I just knew that it was a place that you wanted to be and that you uh, would see your relatives and uh at that time, being young, it didn't mean much to me. Uh, as I got a little older in high school, and I became experienced with death, then I could see that, you know, you, you'd want to see people that you've lost. But we've talked about this before. I mean... People think that being in heaven means that you're going to be with your family for eternity. And it just takes a little common sense to realize that it's hard to get uh, the family together for Thanksgiving and have everyone get along. Why would you want to? Uh, uh, spend eternity with people that you can't sit and eat with for an hour without a fight breaking out. It just doesn't make sense. And anything that is in this flesh uh, just is not an example, I'll put it that way, Oh, it is, though. It's an example of heavenly things, but you can't leave it in the flesh. And May was talking about that. We should have just, she was on fire, and she's on fire because she knows what she's talking about. 
She's not talking about some temporary thing in the flesh, some church, some, you know, they want you to, when you die, uh, you go to heaven with your physical body. My gosh, this body causes me more grief and trouble and pain and suffering. Why would I want to take it with me? Does not make any sense. Uh, finish off in Revelation uh, there for me, Linda. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found anymore in heaven. All right. So Michael, uh, he had the war with Satan and his angels. It didn't even take Yahweh Elohim to fight that war. Michael could do it. But he overcame that satanic host, that satanic uh, uh, mystery that rose up against Yahweh, that satanic mystery who knew Yahweh and rose up and disobeyed Yahweh and what he uh, knew he was supposed to do. And he did that because he wanted to be the top dog. He wanted to be the one that people looked up to. He wanted to have the titles. He wanted to have the adoration. He wanted to be important. Go ahead and read. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, who deceiveth the whole world. He deceived, deceived, deceiveth, deceived the whole world. He deceived everybody. There was nobody smart enough to take him on. Not with some kind of carnal mind and physical rules and law to be good that nobody could be good. Let's face it, none of us could be good for, you could get by maybe a day, but even as children, little, cute, you still were disobedient. Go ahead and read. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Now, here's the deal. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels. Now, the angels, according to your Bible, is an innumerable company. Innumerable meaning you cannot number. Right now, they can't uh, number the planets and the stars in the universe. They're even having a hard uh, time numbering how many galaxies they, there are. There's more out there than we could ever imagine. And nobody's going to be able to count them all. And, and the angels are more than that. An innumerable company of angels. Where did they go, Linda? Um, they were cast out into the earth. Go ahead. And uh, 10. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now has come salvation and strength in the kingdom of our Elohim and the power of Yahshua. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down who accused them before Yahshua day and night. Yes. And do you have the woe there? Yes, that's 12. All right. Therefore, therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. 
For the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. Now, here comes Satan with his innumerable company of angels, and they're cast down in the earth plane, and they are inhabiting bodies. And there's not enough bodies to accommodate those angels. So, you know, the Roman Catholic Church has this thing about uh, 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 abortion. And even, you know, women are putting their lives at risk because the doctors are afraid they're going to get arrested and what they're doing maybe appears to be abortion. And it really is not. And the point is, is they say, no, you must keep those bodies. And even I, I saw 60 Minutes down south uh, where the abortion issue is so prevalent and everyone agrees with the this uh not to have an abortion because it it's uh uh you're killing a baby well if you have a zygote that is a few cells coming together is that really a baby that you go decide for yourself but my point is this is that they insist that these women have their babies. But once those babies are born, they don't want to take care of them. They don't, they're they getting rid of uh, food stamps and SNAP and uh, mm -hmm. services that would help uh, these mothers uh, be able to take care of their babies. So they insist that they're born, but once they're born, they don't, the government or uh, other groups do not want to take care of them or help take care of these babies. Now, the point is, yes, they're born, but what kind of life will they have? And why is it that in states like uh, uh, these southern states, uh, uh, the uh, uh, how do I even get on this? They won't take care of even the mothers. And the percentage of mothers that die in childbirth is we have the highest number than any uh, um, industrialized country in the world, the U.S. More women die here giving birth than anywhere. And the problem is the mystery of iniquity wants the bodies. So the angels have somewhere to inhabit and the more bodies you have the more people are inhabited by those uh satanic spirits and the more violent it will become all of that is that you've got more violence than ever because there's more people than ever. And that's just the way the mystery of iniquity wants it. More people and more people and more people. And this world is coming down to a close. And there's only one escape. As May already said, that is uh, the mystery of righteousness or Yahshua. He is the only door. 
He's the only escape. And all of us know that we've been put in that position where we couldn't see a way out. Just as Israel coming up out of Egypt couldn't see a way out. They couldn't see past the Egyptians behind them. And they couldn't see past that Red Sea closed in front of them. And they began to panic because they couldn't see a way out. And what they were told is the same that we have been told. Stand still and see the salvation of Yahweh, which is Yahshua. Just when you have no hope left, that is when he will open that door, open that way of escape, so you know beyond a shadow of a doubt there was nothing or nothing that anyone else did to get you out of that jam. It was him and him alone that can go through and open that door and give you the way of escape. And all through the law and the prophets, he has laid that principle down. I mean, you talk about Jonah being stuck in a fish of all places, in a fish. You know, even as a child, I thought that was a made up story. How many, I never heard of anybody getting swallowed by a fish. But then you see all that Yahweh does and you see that these events are possible so he can show us his principles or we can learn uh, about his nature. So Jonah's down in the belly of a fish. And where's he going to go? How is he going to get out of there? And he had to cry unto Yahweh, even though he had been disobedient, even though he just, you know, he had no place to go. But Yahweh provided that way of escape. And Jonah was vomited up on dry ground right there at Nineveh so that Jonah could go and preach. And Jonah didn't like those folks at Nineveh. And you know what? Yahweh didn't care. <laughs> and it came down to they repented there in Nineveh. And it, it made Jonah mad that they repented. It's not Jonah's purpose. It's Yahweh's purpose. And the sooner we get that through our heads, the easier it's going to be. We get into these positions. Uh, um, I've had a lot of health issues the last three or four years. And I just would cry, and what do you want me to do, Yahweh? Am I doing something wrong? And I knew those weren't the answers, but I didn't know what the answer was. And my stupid carnal mind just will come up with, always I come up with the most drastic evil thing. That's just my nature. I'm not one of those cheery look on the bright side of life. That's not the way I normally am. But he has to show me these things because the only way that he will get my attention and my hard head is to put me in these situations that 
are impossible for me to do anything. Diseases that they don't even know why you get them, let alone they don't know how to cure them. They just, it's just because. Well, you know, just because is Yahweh. And that's how he gets your attention. And when he shows you a way to survive, to be able to concentrate in the midst of everything else that's going on, you just have to recognize how blessed we truly are because he speaks to every single one of us. You know, I heard May say that uh, uh, he is with us constantly, constantly. And he has been with us constantly before we knew who he was. He has directed our footsteps. He brought us down to a class and allowed us to listen, allowed us to hear who was speaking to us. He has blessed us and walked with us. And we're doing exactly what we're supposed to be doing. And we are where we are supposed to be. And we need to trust him to see that, to know that. I want Galatians uh, second chapter. Let me get over it there. Um, this is Paul. Uh, we're going to start it at one. And Paul, who was an educated man, spoke many languages, knew the Bible as in the law and the prophets as it was then knew it backwards and forwards, was looked up by other men, uh, revered. He tells us all about this, but this man, Paul, who was against Yahshua initially, received a divine vision and revelation that turned his life around. And that's the same. Recognize you have experienced nothing less than that. So whoever's got it, Galatians 1.1. One, one. Uh, Galatians 1 and 1. Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by man, but by Yahshua the Messiah and Yahweh the Father, who okay. raised him from the dead. Well, just hold on to that for a minute. Paul, who was an apostle, not of men, neither by man. Man did not make him apostle. Man did not make you come in and sit in the chair and listen. Man did not do that. Not of men, neither by man, but by Yahshua and the Father Yahweh, who did what? Raised us from the dead because we had to get that satanic influence out of our lives. And that carnal mind getting just 
squelched and chipped away at every moment. And the more we get close to the end of this age, the quicker this is happening. I dare say you have learned more in the last couple of years or three years uh, in this class. You can learn more in the past three years than many have learned their entire time in class. It's coming quick. It's coming powerful. It's coming strong because we need it because we are at the end of this age. Go ahead and read, Scott. Scott. <laughs> and all the brethren which are with me unto the assemblies of Galatia, grace be to you and peace from Yahweh the Father and from our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah, who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil age, according to the will of Yahweh and her father. Yes, to, read. To whom be glory forever and ever. I marvel that you are soon so removed from him that called you into the grace of Yahshua unto another gospel. Now this is... Paul says, I can't believe that you're being pulled into another gospel. Uh, seven says, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Yahshua. So it's not they're leaving Yahshua and becoming Catholics. This is those that are in uh, their assembly who are preaching things different about Yahshua. And there are those who are believing. And in the third chapter, he goes, uh, uh, Oh, foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that after you have learned the difference between an old covenant and a new covenant, between uh, flesh and spirit, between uh, 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 after you've learned the difference between principles and manifestations in all these years, that you would turn back to that which is physical and worship a man and follow after his teaching, which is not the teaching of Joshua, is not the teaching that he has taught us from the beginning. How can you turn around with all your understanding and drop the name of Joshua? How do you do that? It is by man and it is by the influence of that uh, 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 satanic spirit. So Paul goes, how can you leave this gospel, which isn't another gospel, and yet they have turned it into another gospel? Uh, Start at eight, Scott. Verse 8, but though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. Go ahead. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that which he have received, let him be accursed. For I do now persuade men, or Yahweh, or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Yahshua. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by revelation of Yahshua the Messiah. All right. I'm out of time. And that is how all of us have learned. You sit here 
and remember what you were first taught. And that is still there. That is how we learned, not by uh, uh, Mitchell or Mickey or uh, uh, any of those that went out. We were not taught by them. We were taught by Yahshua. This gospel is not of man. And it is not preached by man and is not believed by man. Just hang in there. It's rough, but guaranteed down the line here, it's going to get one a hell of a lot better is what it's going to get. I love you all. Thank you for the time. I hand it back. Thank you, Dr. Emler. And that concludes our class for tonight. I'd like to thank everybody that joined our Zoom class and also those that joined us on the YouTube. And uh, we'll conclude with the doxology. It's taken from the last two verses of the book of Jude. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our Savior, to Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all time and now and ever. Let us all say hallelujah. 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 hallelujah.